Now let's take a look at the base-induced hydrolysis of an ester. So I some, have some ethyl ester up here, and I'm going to use as my base hydroxide. Uh, and I want to look at how we can go back to forming a carboxylic acid and ethanol. So we have our nucleophile in this case, which is our base, our hydroxide, is just going to attack the carbonyl carbon, form our tetrahedral intermediate. And as always, this is a reversible reaction. Our nucleophile can add. We could just push the electrons in the opposite direction. These electrons back down and form a carbon double bond. We can kick off, I suppose, either the ethoxide, in which case we'll go forward, or the hydroxide, in which case we just go back. And we can go back and forth, back and forth. Nothing's going to happen until it goes in the other direction. When it goes in the other direction, we kick off our ethoxide, and we get this species, which is just a carboxylic acid, and our ethoxide. Now, I'm not going to make this reaction go backwards, because whenever these two meet again, the most likely reaction, by a large amount, is to just pull off this proton in an acid-base reaction. We now have our carboxylate, and ethanol, and the reaction can just sit there happy. It's gotten to a low point in energy. This is not going to go in this direction because it's very unlikely uh, for this strong base to meet up with this carboxylic acid and attack the carbonyl compound. It's much more likely that it's going to pull off that proton, and when it does, this reaction is virtually irreversible. We have a very strong base reacting with a pretty good acid. And if we want to bring this reaction to completion at this point, we would just add one full equivalent acid under aqueous conditions, and we get our carboxylic acid. Now let's take a look at the energetics of this reaction and why it is so. We start off with our carboxylic acid. And the base and the, oops, sorry, this should be ethanol, the ester. We start off at some free energy level with our ester and our base. We disrupt uh, this. This reaction is likely to be slightly uh, endothermic, so we're going to draw that over here, it's going to have some activation barrier to get there, and over here we have our tetrahedral intermediate. And it can go back by just going back over that energy barrier, or it can go forward to form this. Now, this is going to be not much different in energy than over here. It's likely to be a little different because the ethoxide is a bit stronger than the ethoxide, so in fact that's likely to be slightly higher in energy as well. And we have some activation barrier, probably going to be a similar activation barrier. 
But now, remember what happens is this reaction is very much favored thermodynamically. It's very strongly favored. Give us our carboxylate anion. That's a negative charge. And our ethanol for pulling that proton. And this is the reaction that drives this to completion. We then swamp it. We say that we quench the reaction with acid. We need at least one full equivalent of protons to protonate this carboxylic acid and get our final product.